Hey everybody, Prowl here and welcome to another episode on the Bedrock Guide. And for everybody that loves how the storage room turned out but wanted to see more details on how the whole system actually functions together, I've listened and check out my second channel. I'll try to remember, I'm so terrible at posting these links, but there's a link to my second channel in the description below, and I'll try to remember to put a card on the screen. But I've posted a video there going over the whole. Now, our tip of the day is from the Hatter with me, and he gave, gave a great tip. If I wanna see what is in this hopper right here behind me, or this, um, this shulker box right here that does not have a filter and can get backed up pretty easily, what I could do is I could place a comparator. I don't know what kind of room I have, but I could place a comparator coming out of this hopper right here and then have it run into a redstone lamp somewhere. And that would allow me to see whenever this thing gets backed up. And then I would know that I need to purge it by hitting the button. So definitely a good tip. And I might, I might do that, but I got to figure out a way to make it look good. So today's episode is going to be about figuring out where to put your main base and then how to prepare it for your eventual builds. Now, a lot of people may have a lot of good and different tips on this and like to do things in different ways. And hopefully we see some down in the comments below. So make sure you drop your tips down in the comments for things you'd like to do to find and set up a main base. And I'm gonna go over my best advice for this. Uh, we've been using our starter base here for well, quite a while now, and it was always intended to be temporary. So it's time we move out and move into somewhere new once we find it. And actually, I've already found it. And if you attend my streams, you've probably seen the area a couple times already because I do like to, I, I give spoilers and sneak peeks and stuff on streams all the time. I, I can't help it, that's just what I do. Um, and at this stage, you may or may not already have an idea of what you want to do for your main base. And if you do, maybe it's a huge mega base, maybe it's a modern city or a small village or something underground. There's tons of different options. So you need to keep in mind what you want to do when you're looking around for your base location. If you don't know what you want to do, don't get too worried though, because sometimes finding a location first can help you open up some ideas and come up with, you know, I guess some things and some inspirations. So let's look at a couple of my best tips for ways to conduct your search and finding your base location. So method number one is chunk base. Actually, if you go to chunkbase.com, go to apps, and then go to biome is usually the one that I'm going to use for this because it, it lets you more easily search things. You're going to pull up a map of a seed and you need to first, if you're playing on bedrock, you go to bedrock edition 1.14 and above. If you're playing on Java edition, you make sure you pick the Java edition version. And then this is going to load the bedrock based seeds. And I could go in here and put in bedrock guide, for example, is the guide world, no capital letters and it will load the bedrock guide seed, which is, just, that's what this is right here. It's the bedrock guide seed. Or if you are just looking for a map to start a new world in, in the first place, you can just hit random and you'll pull a random seed. So it's that easy. It has the X coordinates up here and the Z coordinates over here on this side. Now, maybe you need a large flat area so you could look for a plains biome, or maybe you wanna build something in the jungle. You can look through the map here, scroll around, zoom in, zoom out, etc and find those areas and then you can get the coordinates for it so like i could double click right here it's going to put a little pin in it and i can write down those coordinates and actually go to those coordinates if you guys see down here at the bottom i could go to those coordinates on the map and on that seed and it'll take me exactly right there also biome the biome finder is really the best for this because what you can do is let's say i know for a fact that i want a plains biome so i just click on plains and it'll show me all of the plains biomes. And then I could find one that maybe I think is big enough, like this right here, right? So I could pick this plains biome. It looks kind of large. It doesn't have a lot of spotty parts to it. Take it back off. And I can see it's uh, beside a birch forest hills, birch forest. And it's got mountains over here on this side. That actually sounds kind of interesting. So maybe we'll actually load up this seed number right here. And we'll take a look and see what that looks like. So I've loaded up to create a new world, just some basic settings. I'm gonna fly around a creative because I wanna see that area that we looked at before. Peaceful, we don't need mobs on for this. And I'll type in a seed number, which was negative 15689111329. And we will start up the world. And then what I can do is I can teleport myself to those coordinates. So I do slash teleport and then at self. And then I'm going to negative three, nine, six, eight. That is the X coordinate. 
Next is the Y coordinate, which is your height. So I'll just do 100. And then the Z coordinate, which was 587. And with any luck, once everything loads, there we are. We're right here at that plains biome. And then we should see the mountain area right here. It was in the map, which is kind of neat. Ooh, there's a village here. That's kind of cool. The village is actually going up the mountain. And then there's the birch forest area. So pretty cool, quick, easy way to use the biome finder to find something that you may want to use. And if you were building some type of a city or you just needed a, some type of like a big flat area for a mega base or any of those types of things, this would actually work perfect. The biome finder found us something that would work exactly for those types of needs. Let's move on to the next method. Now, method number two would be a creative copy of your world. If you've already started your world, go ahead and copy it using the, well, I'm not in there, but you can, you, it's usually at the bottom of the world edit screen when you're not in game. Copy the world, put yourself in creative in that copy, and then start to fly around. Actually, I'm just using the world that we were just in a moment ago, um, but we'll, we'll kind of use this as an example, okay? So... Doing this and putting yourself in creative is a lot easier than wasting a thousand rockets flying around. And if you use rockets to fly around, you can't just stay in one spot and kind of like really look at things. Also, make sure your render distance is set as high as your device will go, at least for this, because all we're doing is looking around. So like mine can do 56 chunks. So we have it set to 56 chunks so we can see it far ways away. And then what you can do is you can start to fly around and look. This method is really good if you don't have a great idea of exactly what it is you want to do, because a lot of times just looking for that right area in the world, just something that catches your eye where you see it and you're like, Oh, that's really cool. That can inspire you. Choose that as your base and then build around what you think would fit in there or whatever ideas kind of pop in your head. I'm going to fly around here for a couple of moments and I'm going to see if I can't find a good location around here. And after a little bit of flying around, I found a place that I actually think is pretty cool. Maybe you guys, you could use, maybe somebody out there could use this as like their base location if you're looking to make a new world. I don't know. If you do, definitely drop in my Discord and let me know. Um, I like to see pictures and know that somebody's doing that, but this is kind of neat. It's like a mountain, right? And it's got this really high shelf that's kind of separated from everything. It's got a big mountain like backing. You could definitely do like some type of like fortified like base that kind of builds into the mountain and uses that as natural protection. Um, you got a pretty decent height over the land here. You got a river on this side and it's really cool like mountainous peninsula. I, this, this actually, this is really cool. I don't know that I'll ever do anything with it because I don't have time for it. But if you plan on loading up the seed and using this as like an area of building something over here, definitely let me know. I'd love to see it. But if we take off here from my base and head out in this direction, I will be able to show you guys the location I have chosen for my base. Now here is my new home sweet home. And before we fly up in there and take a look at it, how did I pick it? Well, I knew Blue Jay was gonna be close. So I did want a base pretty close to him. He's just across the water over there. You see his pirate ship. Um, his farm up in the air. I, sh I should make him decorate that thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, big announcement time. Big, big, big announcement time. The theme of my base is going to be a medieval town. I figured we would stick kind of like classic Minecraft this first season. Minecraft offers so many different blocks and ways to build medieval towns. And I think it's a skill that a lot of people want to have. So I've actually, I've never fully built one myself, so it'll be a little bit of a learning experience for me, but more importantly, hopefully it'll be a really good learning experience for you guys that would like to learn how to build such a thing because we're going to build a pretty awesome one here. Let's get, let's get our wings open. Let's get in the air. So here's an overview of the area and we kind of have like some things that I thought would be kind of things that a town would naturally like want to place itself, right? We have access to water over here, a river. Um, we have a mountain, which is like a natural barrier for defense. Um, and that mountain kind of curves around in this direction. It's going to require us to maybe build it up a little bit, but overall it's there. You can kind of see it. And then all in between, we have a nice natural little nook to put our town in. And what we'll end up going over in future episodes is how to plan a city or town out in terms of the layout and that sort of thing. And we'll be fitting a lot of builds within this town as well. We'll theme them to make them fit that medieval town kind of feeling. 
but if you guys know me you know we're gonna have some farms fit into this as well so that'll definitely be happening don't worry lots and lots and lots of farms because that's what i love um but yeah i really think i really think this is a good area to set up um so yeah we got like look, can i we have like a little oh that's the wrong way we even have like a little area that we can trade with blue jay if we need to if we actually want to set up something it's like an actual like trade like mechanism kind of like maybe a real civilization would use we could we could use the water he's got boats or we could build bridges and use the land i don't know we'll see what happens later on with that i think it could be fun to explore that possibility but this is the base area but we're not done yet now i said home sweet home but if you look at it this place is not really a home yet it's it's not even close to usable um once you find that perfect base location like we have here you actually need to make the train usable so this area is covered in trees it has hills it has water pockets it has holes in the ground it has access big access to caves and all of these different things so we we kind of need to fix that we're gonna we're gonna chop down all the trees we're gonna fill in all the holes we're not gonna flatten the area uh, but we will round out some of the hills to make them a little bit more usable like you know little chunks like this that are just sticking up and we'll fill in some of the little gaps too like you know this area down here is also not really usable so we're gonna have to do a lot of work to make this place usable and i think i have a plan for that you know what time it is anybody want to guess what time it is it's time to roll that time lapse Thank you for watching that time lapse and this brief intermission before we get into the next time lapse but this area wow it looks so good this is so much space not enough emptied it out and i think we're gonna I, I need to like get rid of a couple extra trees i think we're done with the whole tree time lapse thing because i was getting a little tired of it maybe you guys were too i may even cut some of it out but i'm gonna go through and just kind of like empty out or get rid of a few more of these trees in the area and then we're gonna jump into smoothing out the land and using that dirt to fill in all the holes and all the gaps.
and that took a whole lot of time. I spent about two and a half of my days on this, probably about five hours or so, um, just digging all of this out. And I love the way it looks. Hopefully you guys like the process. You kind of saw the way that I would um, chop out parts of the hillside. And I think I got a pretty natural shape to it. Like I said, I did not want to make it flat, um, but I, I, it needs to be usable too. Cause if you guys saw what it looked like after the trees came out, it was not usable at all. I still might like do a little bit of shaping here and there, but I think overall this place is ready to start building some things and start laying out the town. So we're going to do that here pretty soon, but this episode's all done guys. So if you don't mind, if you haven't already click that subscribe button, click that like button and drop me some of your favorite tips or things that you'd like to see in upcoming episodes. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to fall and die, aren't I? <laughs> and otherwise, if you've already done those things, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.